Still going. Still going. How many of you guys remember that? <laughs> A lot of you young crumb crunchers are like, what's he talking about? No, Student of the Gun Radio is still going. The, uh, the NSA and the NCA and the NFL, none of them, all those agencies that start with N, they haven't gotten together yet and shut us down. So Until they do, we're going to keep on doing what we do here. I am your host, Professor Paul Markle, and we are at the... We are at the Student of the Gun University. Fight you. Uh, I am inside of the Glass Case of Emotion Studios. And uh, it's where we do what we do. It's a, it's a magic that we do every day. And I constantly am reminded, Jared, I was just reminded this morning, that we have new listeners that still, some of them just don't quite get it. There's some, they're kind of like, mm, I, I listen, but I'm not really sure exactly. And that's cool. I would keep listening. You will be. I wouldn't want to be so overly simplistic that you get it the very within five minutes. I want you to actually think. I want you to engage your brain. I want you to practice this little thing called analytical thinking. It's like these blog rating things that they rate your reading level or what you write at. Mm-hmm. And instead of lowering your level of writing, why don't you expect people to rise to your level of writing? You mean lowered expectations? Yeah. The, <laughs> that, that's really sad, and it's something that is, is far too common in the United States of America or in our world today. Like, well, the average reading comprehension level, you know, when I was at in 18, 19, well, you know, in my early 20s, people would say that every newspaper story was written to a sixth grade reading comprehension level, right? Well, a sixth grade reading comprehension level in 1980 and a sixth grade reading comprehension level in 2015, I'm going to go ahead and say that the nod would probably go to 1980. Uh, so it's getting worse and worse. We're creating these these essentially the mongoloids, a, a nation of mongoloids that, that can only communicate in grunts and groans and, and you know, monosyllabic words. <laughs> and I, you get this constantly where people will tell you, ah, you're just using fancy words to try and sound smart. No, you don't understand it because you're stupid, and that's not my fault. Oh, it's not nice to call people stupid. Well, Didn't you know that? But only – so who takes offense? The, oh, the stupid people take it. Wait, but if there's – I don't mm. – oh, I see what you're saying. It's like, I don't appreciate you using the term stupid. I have stupid children, and that's I find that to be offensive. What? I don't really know what to say to you. Uh, but welcome – uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Zachary. Zachary just hooked me up. Zachary, the shipping ogre, just walked into the studio and uh, and uh, gave me something that I needed. So thank you, Zachary. We've got to get that kid on the on the television. He yeah, can't hear us now, and, and he never listens to the radio show because, well, because. Yeah. Because people that are related to me don't ever listen, except for my brother. Hey, James, what's up? Uh, yeah, my, my mother and father, and they don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, well, I bet your parents are proud of you. Well, they're they're aware of what I do. They just don't pay any attention to it or watch it or anything like that. Yeah. And you know that your wife doesn't. You know, which which she said something the other day. She's uh, she asked me a question about SWAT fuel. She's like, well, how's that work again? I'm like, they've been sponsoring our show for two years, and you're. Uh, she said, I don't know. I don't listen to what you say. I mean, I listen to you, but just not about stuff like that. <laughs> How many of you have? How many of you out there have spouses that are pretty much the exact same way? I'm telling you, Einstein had a wife, and his wife nagged him and said, "Some genius you are. You can't even remember to take out the trash." Oh, Mister Super Genius, can't even remember to put the toilet seat down, huh, Mister Super Genius? Yeah, exactly. Oh, but it is time for Student of the Gun Radio. Enough hilarity. And uh, before we get into it, I want to tell you guys a story. Now, Jared, I'm going to, as my associate producer there uh, and co-host, I'm going to need you to remind me uh, once we once we've done the little story that I'm going to tell, not to forget to get back into the show notes because I know that I'm doing the show notes kind of. This subject is supposed to be after I say a couple other things, but this is something that I need to say first. I had an experience two nights ago, two evenings ago, 
that almost changed my life forever. I was driving uh, down to uh, on Beach Boulevard. Beach Boulevard is also Highway 90 here in Biloxi. And where the casinos are, where the Beau Rivage and the Hard Rock and, and so forth, the baseball stadium, where those are, uh, it's actually the road widens to six lanes, three lanes in each direction. But it's only that way for about a half a mile or so because there's so much traffic in front of the casinos, in front of the baseball stadium. There's a gas station there and so forth. So uh, I'm heading, I'm just heading over to the Hard Rock, have myself a cigar and to decompress and have a little relaxing time. And I'm, uh, I'm in the far right lane. So imagine that, if you will. There's three lanes. There's a center lane, there's a left lane, and then there's a right lane. And as I'm approaching the, uh, the stoplight, which is at an intersection right by the Beau Rivage driveway, and across the street is a shell station where a lot of people will walk over from the Beau to get their various a sundry junk, you know, that you get from a gas station. Well, as I'm approaching, I'm going in front of the of the, the hotel, traffic in the center lane and in the left lane, now keep in mind I'm in the right lane, they've had to stop for the the red light, for the the signal, but there's no one in the right lane. And it's as I'm approaching it, I see it, I see that it's red, but uh, it changes. Well the light changes from red to green. The people in the left and right lane are already at a complete stop. I'm sorry, yeah, the left and center lane are already a complete stop, but there's no one in front of me, so there's I don't have to stop. So I just proceed as if I'm going to go through the intersection. A woman ran out. This is about 7.30 at night. It's dark. A woman ran out from in front of the center lane traffic. And when, as she was probably early 20s, I want to say. Ran out in front of me ran in front of my truck the and i had to in literally and i'm not even joking approximately the span of one to 1.5 seconds see her recognize it and i cut the wheel hard right jam, and i stomp the brake pedal she needs to be thanking dodge and dodge brake pads locked it up <laughs> Made the whole skid noise and everything. Locked up the brakes, and the like. And this is all transpiring in, in fractions of seconds. I, I locked it up, skidded, looked up to think, "What the hell did I? Did, am I doing something?" No, the, my light was green. What happened was this: was the the light was obviously red. So she starts out across. It changes. So instead of not crossing, she just decides, "Well, these cars are stopped." So they can't run me over, you know, they can't, they're, they're just going to have to wait until I finish walking in front of them to proceed through the intersection on the green light, except my lane, my lane, the right lane, there was no one in it. So I had no, when I saw it and it changed from red to green, there was no reason for me. And I was going, it's, it's 35 miles an hour in front of the casinos. And I was probably going right around 35. I thought it was 45. No, it's 35. Huh. It's 35 when you get right down there to that section. Oh, okay. I know what you're yeah. talking about. You know what? It's, it, dude, it's right the shell and the bow. Yeah. She was going back to the bow ravage. Yeah. So, and, and the crazy thing about this, I mean, in addition to what I'm telling you right now, is the, the girl, the first one, who I almost killed, well, I, she probably wouldn't have died, but if, if I hit you with a Dodge truck going 35 miles an hour... It's not going it, to feel good. It's not going to feel good. Uh, so she was there, and then her friend was about ten to fifteen feet behind her, because as I locked as I locked it up, skidded to a halt to stop to prevent myself from running her over. I looked up and I see coming from the left another person, a second woman, who was following the first one, and she looks at her friend. The first one just like doesn't even pause, continues to run up the hill back to the hotel. And the other one yelled, and of course I can't hear, the windows are up, you know, yelled something at her friend, laughed, and kept running and ran across the street in front of me. Now that, of course, now that my brakes are locked up and I'm not moving, she can keep going. Yeah. It wasn't as even though they, there was no remorse, like, wow, we're complete and total idiots. 
There was none of this, oh, geez. And, you know, I could have just and, died. And Nancy's like, she goes, did you scre- get out and scream at him? No, I didn't. I didn't. Well, I mean, that's I mean, not going to help anything. They, I mean, you know, I, I, was, I was in such a state where I couldn't believe that it just happened to me. I had, a, I had an adrenaline dump, and I was processing things in, in, in you know, like uh, hyper fashion. Just yeah. And I thought to myself, okay, number one, that it, here's what happens. If you are in, you're driving your car, and you know this as well as I do, you're driving your car, and how many times has some asshole you you just gonna have to pick that up at eleven minutes and twelve seconds. You can say ass. I can say on well, public. I, no, 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 you better bleep it. I'll, uh, I'll bleep the whole. Yeah, you can say ass though. Yeah. Okay. So, has someone stepped off the curb in front of you as a pedestrian, or let's? Let, I've got a great one for you. You're in the strip mall or the Walmart area or the shopping center, and someone just walks out of a store, steps off the curb, walks right in front of you without even looking, as I have to say, I have right of way. Okay, is that going to make you feel better from your hospital bed? It, it, you hit somebody, if you're a driver and you hit someone, a pedestrian, the story will never be stupid pedestrian runs out in front of car, gets hit. No, that's not the story. The story is reported as uh, pedestrian hit by car in front of whatever. You know, woman struck by vehicle. Struck by truck, hit by car. I think our pedestrian laws should be like Europe. Yeah, it's like you, you're, and if you're so, dumb enough, I mean, to step I'm out, I'm, yeah. gl- I'm very glad that I did yeah. not hit this woman. I yeah. believe me, I am thankful. I said my prayers and I said my thanks that I did not hit this woman because it would have changed my life forever. I mean, at least for a long time. Yeah, if I would have hit that woman, even though. From a technical standpoint and a legal standpoint, she would have been 100% in the wrong. And, and, I, and I went over it and over it in my head. And I thought, okay, did, was I, did I do something? Should I, could I have done something else? I mean, other than to think, okay. And when you approach an intersection, you always, I'm, I mean, I'm going to look and I look at, you know, the cross street. Is somebody just going to say, I mean, there's well, been many they times. They were probably when, behind the cars. Well, that's the thing. I could not have seen. It's like. Yeah. If you're in a big city, and and the reason they have jaywalking laws in the big city is because if you sprint out from between two parked cars, the vehicle in question has no ch- chance. There's no possible way they can not hit you. Yeah. When I was a young, uh, I'm not young police officer, I don't know, about 15 years ago maybe. It was like 99, I guess, however long that ago it was. Ooh, 16 years, geez. I used to do a thing. I, I proctored or taught a program called Car Teens. It's through the 4-H. I remember that. And Car Teens is a program designed to help teens who have had moving violations, 16, 17-year-olds who've had moving violations, rather than losing their license, the juvenile judge would sentence them to go to this. Basically, it's like it's like speeding school or traffic school or whatever for, for teenagers. And it was a Saturday for eight hours. And they had to come in, and we had... You get the local EMT guy to come in and talk about blood on the highway. And well, one of the things that we we uh, we taught them, and that I would teach, is if a vehicle is moving at this rate of speed, at the from the time that you realize there's an obstacle in front of you, the time you, you your brain processes that, you take your foot off the accelerator, apply the brakes, and as hard as you can, and come to a complete stop. If you're going this fast, it's like 5588, I believe. was. I think if you were going 55, you saw it, you jumped on your brakes and hit them as hard as you possibly could, you were still going to travel approximately 88 feet. Now, if you're a highway patrolman and I'm getting my numbers wrong, cut me some slack. But the fact of the matter is, it is a physical impossibility to stop a vehicle in motion when it's going so fast in such a, you know, a, a, a short distance. When they tell you to leave one full car length be- per 10 miles an hour between you and other people on the highway, they're not just making that crap up. The reason is, if you don't, it is a physical impossibility. It's science. Did you know that they don't teach that everywhere? Yeah, it's a physical impossibility for you not to collide with the object in front of you. You cannot stop that vehicle in motion. And so knowing what I know... Uh, generally, they say it's it's 0.5 seconds, a half second 
from the time that you see something is going on, you realize I have to remove my foot from the accelerator to place it on the brake pedal and to apply that. That is if the driver is heads up, two hands on the wheel, and is paying attention and has good reflexes. If they're actually... But if you add in things like talking on the phone, if you add in things like, I mean, forget it. If you're looking down, if I would have been like the other 10,000 retards on the road that spend most of their time looking down at their phone while they're driving, this that woman would have been run over. If I would have been an octogenarian, if I would have been an older person, and this is not sexism or, I'm sorry, ageism, the fact is, is as you age, your reflexes deteriorate. It's just, it's science, it's physics. Uh, it, it's the way it is. If I would have been the normal um, Sunday evening, Monday evening uh, casino player, let's say I was in my 60s or, or even 70 or, or, or older, I would have, that woman would have been run down. She'd have been killed. If I would have looked down, if I would have reached over to change the radio station at that moment in time, she would have been hit. If I was 10 feet farther ahead than I was, folks, it, it may, telling this story makes me want to vomit. It does. But I felt the need and after I examined it, I, I Jared, I went and parked. I, and, of course, the, the Hard Rock parking lot is only, what, 200 yards from that intersection maybe, if that. Uh, so I went and parked. Through, I mean, as, as soon as I could, I got in the parking lot, threw it in park, turned the thing off, and I called your mom. And I was like, I said, you need to just let me tell you this story because I'm shaken. My hands are shaken. I almost ran someone over. And it, it, there, was all, there was nothing I could have done other than what I did do was to see what was going on and apply the necessary steps. And if it were not if it were not for the fact that I, I you know what's funny, Jared? Is Jared, yesterday Zach and I were in the we were in the the cage and we were doing gladius work, we were doing sword work. And one of the things I said to Zach, and I said, in addition to all the other stuff, the wrist strength and, and what have you uh, that we're working on, we work on on, on footwork and so forth, I said, we're actually also honing our reflexes because when you spar because we were actually um we're doing like light sparring work with the gladius when you do that you're working on your reflexes boxers strikers martial artists athletes are constantly working on their reflexes because they have to have good physical reflexes if you if you don't have good physical reflexes as a striker or a fighter or a whatever you don't do it very long <laughs> because <laughs> you just end up hurt a lot and then you stop. But my point is this. Recently, someone brought, well, several of you guys out in the audience brought up to me, to us, to Jared and I, the fact that there's an article out there about the myth of situational awareness. And when we talked about it, if you're a dedicated student of the gun, you know that situational awareness is not just about preparing for a gunfight. Situational awareness is not just about looking for boogeymen in the alleys. You know what I'm talking about, Jerry. Did you read? You saw the story. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to your Uncle Dave about it, what have you. Situational awareness is for your whole life. And in one of the. I don't know which book that I write it in about if you have good situational awareness, it's not just about boogeymen. It's about whether or not you have a car crash or whether or not you have a near miss. People that have near misses have good situational awareness. People that are just keep crashing into stuff are not, you know, <laughs> they're not paying attention. But the, the story that's out there, it's floating around. You don't have to look it up. I don't, I don't I mean, you can if you want, but it really disturbed me was because it essentially convinced or it attempted to convince the the great unwashed masses that this whole situational awareness thing that all these tactical gurus talk about is really overblown and misunderstood and you shouldn't bother. You shouldn't unless of course you go to that one particular school that teaches a special kind of situational awareness. Nobody else teaches it as special and cool as that one school. Uh, if I wasn't, if I didn't have situational awareness, if I wasn't paying attention, if I wasn't heads up, I would have run a woman over. 
and there would have been nothing I could have done about it. When someone sprints out from in front of a parked car at night, and, and what do you do? And, and literally, I mean, I was asking myself, did you, were you going too fast? No, I was going the speed limit. Did you disobey the signal? No, it, I saw it turn from red to green, so I was, there was nothing to impede my progress. I'm driving through. They're like, well, you know, when you come up to an intersection, you need to. Really? Tell me how many of you guys slow down to like 10 miles an hour as you come to every intersection. You would get rear-ended. You can't. That's right. If you, if you did that, it's impossible to do that. So what can you do? Well, number one, uh, when we, and we're, we talk about this more in, in different training, but I want you guys to think about that. I want you to think about that, that. And the difference, I mean, that was literally a situation where two seconds difference would have changed my life if not forever, for a long, long time, for a long time. And, and it was almost as if, this, the, the, like I said, it, there was like no remorse or, or, man, we're terribly sorry or that was horribly stupid on our part. It was kind of like – they were drunk. It was like a big – no, I, they didn't seem drunk. But then again, I don't know. I didn't interview them. But the fact of the matter is, is that woman, through her selfish negligence, could have changed – could have ruined someone else's life. And you're like, wow, but she'd have gotten run over. Yeah, but even if you're an idiot and you get run over, everyone gives you sympathy. How many times have you heard about someone crossing a highway and gets run over, and everyone's like, oh, that's terrible. And I say, what in the world is a person walking across an interstate for? You're you're begging to be run over if you cross walk across an interstate. But... Folks, when you're out there today, if you are driving right now, I hope that you're 10 and 2. I hope that your head is up and you're looking. Uh, and I don't know what else to tell you, but I felt that I really needed to, to, to share that with you guys. And that it was important enough that I would take the time in this show to, to talk about it. But if anybody ever comes to you, if you ever you get these naysayers or these, these, these C student or these weakness enablers, they're like, oh, don't don't worry about that. Don't spend so much time on that. Don't da, da, da. I hate it. It really angers me when people encourage their fellow man to be mediocre. Oh, don't don't try. Don't strive. Don't try and improve your lot in life. Don't try and improve yourself. What you need to do is you just need to be mediocre. Don't put in the effort. So, uh, I would encourage you to put in the effort. All right, Jared, why don't you go ahead and tell the folks at home who've been listening to me for about 20 minutes now, tell them who our featured sponsor of the week is. Uh, this week's featured sponsor is Velocity Triggers. Uh, today's Tuesday, so it should be the second day that you go say thank you. Uh, if you already did, thank you very much for letting them know that you appreciate their support because we definitely do. Uh, go to their Facebook page. They, are they on Gun District? I think they might be. I don't know if they're on Gun District or I know not. Tom listens. Tom, if you're listening to me and you're not on GunDistrict.com, go create a page. There. That's or done. have someone do it. Yeah, or have somebody do it. He knows what I meant. Yeah. So Facebook, Gun District, or go to their website. Uh, I've got two links in the show notes. If you go to studentofthegunradio.com, click on SOTG247, and you'll be able to click on the links in there. There's one to Facebook and one to their website. Hey, uh, uh, you know who was on there Monday? And already thanked him, Ryan Hepfer and yeah. Lauren Hudson. Yep. So two super fans right there, two super students of the gun they have awesome. already done it. And so I guess my question to you is, why have they and you haven't? Hmm. Good question. Velocity triggers, designed for precision. Crossbreed holsters, designed for carrying a gun. That's oh, Velo if you want to go to the Velocity's website, velocitytriggers.com. That would be a good I don't, idea. I, I didn't say that. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, if they didn't get it by now, I don't know what to say. Well, yeah, just in case you don't want to actually go to the radio notes and click, which if you don't, then you're wrong. But you, you can. You're allowed. Crossbreed is made in uh, Missouri, American-made. Mo. Do yourself a favor. Lauren, if, you're there. If, yeah, if, you, uh, if you order a Crossbreed holster, spend the extra whatever it costs and get the horse hide backing. You won't regret it. That's The horse hide backing is for serious gun carriers. If you're serious about it, if you're really going to wear it every day, Spend the extra 10 or $15, whatever it is, and do that. All right, uh, moving on. SWAT Fuel. Yesterday was the SWAT Fuel Warrior of the Week day. Uh, and if you want to be the Warrior of the Week, don't forget that you can call in at 682-207-7684. And the Warrior of the Week, every week, it's a free bottle of SWAT Fuel Plus P. And go to SWATFuel.com. 
When you check out, stop yourself for just a second. Use the promo code SOTG two zero one fiber and if you do that you're going to save yourself 10 percent. so there you go there you go and one thing we're actually running i don't do a good enough job at telling people what numbers to call for the warrior of the week thing because we're actually running out of questions in the box so your assignment if you can hear my voice your assignment is to call seven six what what is it i don't even remember six eight two six eight two there you go. 682. Call 682 207 7684. That is the Warrior of the Week line. I want you to have a question scripted out that takes about 30 seconds to ask. That's your assignment. Yeah. A, qu- a question, question, an intelligent is, is question. A, is a sentence with a question mark at yep. the end of it, not a paragraph and a half. Just, well, and the thing is, you guys can do whatever you want. I don't care. You can talk on it for an hour. But we do appreciate feedback. But if you want your question yeah, asked your, your on the question. radio show, then you need to do as we say. There you go. All right. It does we, what it's told. Okay? It does what it's told. We haven't uh, we haven't used this theme song in quite a while, and I've been a bit remiss. So I'm kind of excited that it's back again. Thank you, Wasp. Yes, for the song "Blind in Texas," coming to you from the Republic of Texas. Uh, K Fox fourteen is the source on this one. I do not know where K Fox fourteen is, but it doesn't really matter where K Fox is. The fact is, Dateline, El Paso, Texas. A University of Texas El Paso professor is speaking out against the campus carry legislation to be in effect next year, and his actions are inspiring movements. Bowel movements? Maybe. I I don't know. Inspiring bowel movements at other Texas universities. (laughs) UTEP professor David Smith hyphen Soto. Stop the presses. Does this dude have a hyphenated last name? Yep. Are you... Did he take? Do you think this dude took his wife's half his his wife's last name and hyphenated it? I don't know. Probably. We have a special trophy that's right here in the student of the gun lobby that we would like to offer to David Smith hyphen Soto. Uh, have you gotten any farther on that yet? No, but uh, we will. Uh, the Dave or blah blah blah. No guns allowed sign in his classroom. Oh, which Smith Soto said is a protest against the campus policy, uh, carry policy in the works, is inspiring other professors to do the same. Before I get any further, why don't we go ahead and listen to what Mr. Hyphenated Last Name, and I know, dudes, if you're like a real hardcore human individual and you have a hyphenated last name, just drive on with your bad self. But you and I and Jared and all of us know that the vast majority of people who hyphenate their last names, especially women, have mental issues. And this person here, by their actions, is displaying that they have severe mental issues, one of them being hoplophobia. Jared, go ahead and play the the news clip. Let's listen to the voices of the reasonable. Need guns in the classroom. As I reported on Tuesday, Professor David Smith Soto does not approve of the new statewide campus carry policy. After I reported about Soto planning to keep his no-gun sign up, even if his building will allow guns in the new policy, and his movement has reached other Texas universities. I was a lonely voice in the basement of uh, a building at, in El Paso at, U- at, the, at UTEP. Uh, following uh, Professor Smith Soto at, at, um, at UTEP, we put an, an announcement on our Facebook page. Joe Newberger is a professor at the University of Texas. After seeing our news, she contacted Soto. And uh, she told me that um, hearing about what we were doing here at, at Oh, Utah, he's got a doggy in his video. That inspired them to be more active over there. Joan tells me her and other professors at UTEP are getting together to petition the campus carry policy with 100 professors. Woo-hoo. Right now we're just trying to make a statement as powerfully and as uh, forcefully as possible that we're opposed to having guns uh, around students, that we're opposed to having guns on the university. Their goal? 
to not allow guns in the classroom, and she's encouraging Soto to sign the petition along with the other professors. It's up to 100 professors to sign on to the idea. Mm-hmm. From how many schools? Mm-hmm. So I'll do what I can to uh, let professors, primarily in my own department, know that, that UT Austin is spearheading this petition drive. Each university under the UT system is assigned a task force to handle its own campus carry policy. UT's task force is currently working on its own policy on campus, and so is UTEP. When I asked UTEP officials about the campus carry policy and SOTO's actions, they sent me this statement. We take the safety of our campus very seriously. Communication to our campus constituents and as to what will and will not be allowed on campus is critically important, and we are working tirelessly to get information finalized and distributed by the beginning of next year. Okay. Well, isn't that wonderful? They're really concerned about the safety. They're so concerned. You know, and here we go, the students. I love how they refer to college people, people who go to a university as students, as if you're supposed to imagine them as like little 14-year-olds. These are full-grown adults, okay? These are fully grown adult human beings. And if they can't be trusted around firearms, then we have a problem in America. Here, here you go, Professor. I have to clarify that I was talking about the professor from the school, not Professor Paul. <laughs> no, no, because our classrooms are all fully equipped with firearms. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, we even uh, have ghost guns here. Yeah, that's They're right. invisible. We, you can't see them. We have ghost guns. And, and this is one professor that packs. But uh, the reason I wanted to share this with you is because, A, number one, if you're spending money to send your little crumb crunchers, you have a 19, 20, 21, 18, whatever. You need to understand the, the psycho-indoctrination that they're undergoing, the, the liberal agenda indoctrination that they're being put under, and that is that firearms are bad. They're, they're really bad, and you shouldn't have them. And we, we don't want them around students. You mean, are they like 13-year-olds? Well, no, you know, they're like they're adults. But, oh, so, you know, the people who are the exact same age as those that are in the United States military, yeah, those people... They can't be trusted. It's just it's just too dangerous. It's just too dangerous. Um, I would say, um, hey there, buddy. Hey, buddy. Oh, do you believe that your sign will prevent a lunatic Muslim missionary from walking in and killing your students and you? Do you think your sign will stop that? It will? Oh, you think so? We're importing 100,000 enemy troops into the United States we're going to spread them out all over the country and just wait for them to go. And your little sign and your little quash womb and, and the chick, the professor chick that was on the Skype interview with the guy, we, we want to know, everyone to know that we have 100 professors, 100 people. They're going to protest this. I guess we need to get 100 trophies then. Oh, oh. Maybe it would be a revolving trophy. So anyway, my thing is if – so what should happen is if there ever is a uh, a massacre at any of these schools, everybody just goes to the one classroom that has the no guns allowed sign because they'll all be safe. Well, that, that should be the rally point. There you is, go. Uh, is the no guns. If there's ever an active shooter, a lunatic with a weapon at your school, run to the nearest no gun sign. And maybe it's like tag. Maybe if you touch it, it's like freeze tag. You run up and you touch the no gun sign with your hand. You're like, ah, I'm touching the no gun sign. The active shooter will poof. Oh, you can't, you can't kill me. I'm touching the the no gun sign. It's complete and total disconnect from reality. But that's okay because we know that reality has no business in the mind of a liberal. All right, moving on. Thank you to Frog Lube. It just works. It's green. It's minty fresh. It's non petroleum based. Check them out at froglube.com. Century Arms, the sponsors of the mobile app, who have extended the twenty five dollar. TP9 SA rebate for you guys. So if you want to take advantage of that, you have until October, I believe, 15th to take advantage of that. Brownells at Brownells.com. You can buy frog lube at Brownells. You know what else you can buy at Brownells? You can buy Duracoat, can and can technology, and you can redo your ugly gun because life is too short to have ugly guns. Let's face it, it just is. So uh, check those guys out. And we put some pictures up this weekend on our social media, on Facebook and Instagram, of a 
uh, a olive drab green century arms pistol that we did with the Duracoat Canon Can technology. And did we acknowledge our our dearly departed friend Tiny Tim? He is the the uh, oh, music, yeah. musician who does the vagination report. Tip two through the tulips. Tiny Tim. Yep, Thank Tiny you, Tiny Tim. Tim. Thank you, Tiny Tim. All right. Tiny Kurt's favorite. I mean, <laughs> Kurt's favorite. Yeah. Tiny Kurt. So. All of this stuff that we just did, we just led up to the disconnect that those who live in the, these ivory towers, these, these liberals, where if you can only feel something strongly enough, you can change the world. We can change the world with feelings. It would be, wouldn't it be wonderful if we all held hands and sung kumbaya? Folks, we live in, in, in a rock and stone world. And those who can pick up rocks and throw them at you will do so. Why do you carry a gun? So I'm serious. I'm being 100% this serious. This is my Second Amendment right. Uh, I'm, no, I'm being 100% serious. If there was no Second Amendment, if there was no Bill of Rights, if you were just a human living on planet Earth and you were able to secure a firearm to put your little paws on one, would you do it and would you carry it with you? Would you possess one? And why? Now, I know there are guns that are used for recreation and sport. There are guns that are used for hunting, which is a recreational activity in the United States of America. I know that cork is up there killing moose to eat, but the fact of the matter is, is the vast majority of the, the world doesn't kill their food to eat. Why do you carry a gun? If you're a gun carrier, if you went out, in, whether you live in, a, in a, uh, a constitutional carry state, whether you live in you know, a permit state or what have you, what is the purpose? And you say, Paul, you're being rhetorical. We all obviously know what the purpose is. Well, do we? Do we really understand the purpose of a firearm? What is the purpose of it? Is, is it a, a penis extension? Is, is it man jewelry? Is it something that you have on you so you can talk about and show to your friends? Uh, does, or is it a life-saving tool? I would say it is all of those things to some people. Yeah. However, all of our students of the gun. Well, you need to ask yourself, exactly. Yeah, all of our students of the gun, they're over there, they're yelling, Professor Paul, Professor ooh, Paul, ooh, pick ooh, me. Ooh, ooh, pick me. Ooh, Mr. Cotter, Mr. Cotter. Ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh. It's a life-saving tool. Yeah. It is a tool. It's an instrument of It's an instrument of liberty. Thank you very much. So if you understand that, if you're serious about that thing, and Bill of Rights aside, Second Amendment aside, U.S. Constitution aside, you are a human being on planet Earth. And you understand that there are other human beings on planet Earth that would intentionally harm you and harm your family. They would do that. You, do you believe that? If you don't believe that, if you're like like one of these fairy dust snorters like we have at, the, at UTEP and all these other uh, professional indoctrinators that we have working at our colleges and across the nation. If you're a fairy dust snorter like this dude here, like Dash Soto. Uh, you probably don't believe that anyone would really ever try to hurt you on purpose. Some people might accidentally hurt you, but but no one, and unless you're a white Republican, then they would hurt you, but then you had it coming. Seriously, do you believe that uh, being an inhabitant of the planet, that there are other homo sapiens, uh, or animals for that matter, uh, that would try to intentionally and deliberately harm you and harm your family, even up to doing deadly force harm to you and your family. If you don't believe that, then you really there's no point in you, you carrying a gun unless you're using it as man jewelry. But if you do believe that, you say, yes, Paul, I understand. I have acknowledged that there are evil people in the world and that ignoring evil does not make it go away. Pretending evil isn't there doesn't make it go away. And you cannot control the evil that you may randomly encounter as you go on about your day. It doesn't matter whether you go to the mall, to the grocery store, to your church, to a school, whether you go to the worst part of town or the best part of town, you cannot control who comes and goes from those places. And even if you think you're going to a place where it is controlled, even if you go to a maximum security prison, and we, it may not be firearms, but I tell you what, every time they shake down a prison, they come up with weapons. Why is that? 
Is it because of the availability of weapons? No. What do prisoners in maximum security facilities do? They manufacture their own weapons. When weapons are taken away from them, they find ways to make other weapons. That's the way human monsters work. A human monster is never going to be dissuaded by more reasonable background check restrictions. They're never going to be dissuaded by plastic signs in Professor, Professor Douche Nozzle's classroom. They are never going to be dissuaded. They are evil. Do you wish to prepare yourself to confront evil? Yes or no? Well, that's hard, and that requires a lot of effort and thought and dedication. Yes, it does. It requires all those things. So, given that fact, and the fact that you live in free America, I'm assuming that if you listen to me, most of you do. I know a lot of you are living in slave nations and slave states. But if you live in a free state, if you live in free America, if you have the opportunity, the genuine opportunity and the ability to equip yourself with a life-saving tool and to get the, the training and the information, the knowledge how to use that tool, why would you choose to deliberately not do that? Well, Paul, you don't understand. I can't some places. Or the rules and restrictions against me doing so are so onerous and so great. If I get caught with a gun in New York, I'll go to jail for 10 years. Okay. Let's go back to question number one. Why do you carry a gun? What is it to you? And if you honestly answered it is a life-saving tool then you must ask yourself a really hard and serious question. Why are you deliberately disarming yourself? Why have you chosen to do that? And if you are leg legitimately concerned about being busted for carrying a gun when you're not supposed to, that's a big concern of yours. You're like, I just, I'm, I'm really afraid. Then why do you deliberately live or travel to areas that that will disarm you because have they disarmed the criminals all the criminals in new york new jersey chicago you name it they're all disarmed right and you say well no paul that's stupid that's a stupid question it's a stupid statement they're not disarmed they all have arms ah so what you're telling me is that it is not possible regardless of the number of laws to prevent evil men and women to prevent the evil from arming themselves. It is only possible to convince reasonable, law-abiding, non-criminal people to deliberately disarm themselves. So in the world, not the United States of America, not Canada, not Mexico, not whatever, in the world, on planet Earth, the only people that can be disarmed are those that are willing to allow themselves to be disarmed. Because what have we already established? We've already established that the evil will always find a way. Even in a maximum security prison, they will figure out how to make a toothbrush into a shank. They will take a broken piece of glass or plexiglass, or a file, or whatever they can get their hands on, and they will create a weapon from that. If you can make weapons in a maximum security prison, how do you expect evil people to be disarmed in the world when they, they are free to move about? This is actually the second time today that prisoners have been used as an example. So I'm taking that as a hint that tomorrow on the Fitness Talk segment, I'm going to talk about dedication and what I'm going to be calling the prison syndrome. The prison syndrome. Yes. So, folks, I need you to be, I, I need you to be super serious and ask yourself, why do I carry a gun? Am I just doing it because I want my buddies at the gun shop to think I'm cool? Do, do I do it because... You know, I, it's man jewelry, and I can't wait to show people my $2,500 Crimson Carry, Kimber Crimson Carry Custom 2, you know, 
with hydroshocks. I was just about to say loaded with hydroshocks. Well, well, half loaded with hydroshocks. We don't oh, put yeah, one yeah, in the chamber because right. that would be dangerous. Yeah. Well, they are hydroshocks. Yeah, shocks, you know, sometimes so, so they don't even, you don't even need you just need to like have them on you. You don't even need to launch them. Just the mere possession of a hydroshock provides a cone of invincibility around you and those around you. That is your task. That is your assignment today. That is your gut check for Tuesday. I want you to gut check yourself and say, why do I carry a gun? Do I carry it as a life-preserving tool? And do I understand that that is important, that as a free individual? Do you understand, as you listen to my voice, if you're within the borders of the United States of America, you are a small, one of a small percentage of human beings that inhabit this planet and that have inhabited planet Earth through the entire history of the world that has the opportunity to be an independent free citizen, to exercise individual liberty. You are one of the few people in the entire history of the world that can do that. The vast majority of people who have inhabited this planet have either been part of the ruling class or they've been part of the peasantry. The fact that you're able to wake up and go to sleep within the borders of the United States of America is an opportunity. That is the opportunity for you to live like a free person. That's something that most of the planet doesn't have. They can't have it. They've, they've been disarmed by edict. They've allowed themselves to be disarmed. The people of Australia allowed themselves to be disarmed. Well, no, they didn't. They passed laws. Oh, I forgot they passed the law. Yeah, the people of England, the people of India, the people wherever it happens to be, allowed themselves to be. And why is that? So there's assignment number two for you guys. Remember, the first one was to call the Warrior of the Week line with an intelligent question or feedback or whatever. The second assignment you have is the people who have access to the grad program member Facebook group. I want you guys to have a discussion. Answer the question, why do you carry a gun? And if you have chosen to carry a gun, why do you go about purposely and deliberately disarming yourselves? And are you, are you serious about it, or are you just playing a game? And I'm not going to ex- excoriate you or whatever. I, that is it. That is it for today. Jared, cue up the, the outro music because we're, we're just about done. But uh, I want you to ask yourself that hard, serious question. Why do I carry a gun? Am I doing it because it's a life-saving tool, or am I just doing it to be one of the cool kids? And it's time to have a a, a serious, hardcore look in the mirror with yourself. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday, uh, at least on my calendar it is. And that means it's going to be SWAT Fuel Fitness Talk Day. And Jared's going to have some fitness talk for you because we like fitness. And uh, we'll have lots of other stuff to talk about, I guarantee it. All right, kids, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, remember, you're a beginner once, but a student for life.